So with that, um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sean Pepp, and I'm one of three regional coordinators for Guided Pathways in the LA and OC region. Um, this is one of our many rapid webinars that we have hosted, which are 30 minute quick webinars that are recorded and highlight tangible high impact practices that come from the field. Um, as always, all of our rapid webinars are recorded and posted to the Vision Resource Center. Uh, we also send it over our LAOC regional coordinator um, guided pathways uh, listserv. Today, I'm excited to introduce to you all the LA Valley College team who recently implemented and um, designed and implemented a new College 101 course focused on onboarding their students. They will share a little bit about how they developed their College 101 course, some of the successes, and a few of the lessons they've learned through their process. Because LA Valley College is part of, an, uh, of the LA Col Community College District, I think that their perspective is particularly helpful, especially for those who are coming from other multi-college districts, um, because much of what they have done and learned um, is in relationship to uh, being in a district as well. So with that, I want to go ahead and turn this on over to the LA Valley team. And so I will turn it over to Rebecca to introduce herself. Oh, hi, I'm Rebecca Stein. I'm the Guided Pathways Coordinator at LA Valley College. Uh, we've actually divided our talk into three parts. Uh, so we're going to start with how the course outline was developed. And Becky Frank will talk about that for us. She's one of our Guided Pathways navigators and also a former Curriculum Committee Chair, which was very helpful in the process. Um, next, we'll talk about the development of the actual course content uh, that will be done by Scott Weigand, um, also one of our Guided Pathways navigators. Um, and we'll finish up by talking about how we hired and trained the instructors and our experience offering the class for the first time this last year. And that will be done by Christian Nova, who is our College 101 coordinator. Um, so I'll turn it over to Becky to get started. Great, thank you. Uh, Sean, next slide, maybe. Thanks. So um, as part of our Guided Pathways work on campus, um, we did a lot of development to help onboard our students as one of the pillars. And um, as part of that, because many of our students are first generation college students or returning after many years to college, um, we felt that a first year seminar, um, both as a high impact practice, but also as a way to introduce people and enculturate them essentially to being a college student would be a really um, great initiative to try on our campus. Um, and so as part of this, we wanted to integrate a lot of the, the components that make these high impact practices really valuable to students, including writing and critical thinking, research, um, information literacy, and then that collaborative kind of learning together that helps build community. Um, and so that was really part of our goal in developing this class, that we wanted to have students feel confident that they knew how to be a college student and knew how to be successful in college. Um, and that included both affective and sort of essential academic skills. So affiliative as well as academic um, and to develop their sense of belonging um, and connect all of that to their own personal career goals, all of which appear to be um, valuable tools to helping students succeed in college. Um, our initial concept for this class was also to connect them to um, other students and faculty within their meta majors. We call meta majors on our campus the career and academic pathways. And so our initial goal was to have these courses taught by um, CAP related faculty to groups of students who are from that same CAP. So it would be building community within the CAP. Okay, Sean. Um, and so to work on developing this course, we um, formed a work group that consisted of both teaching and counseling faculty representatives from student services, members of our academic senate, and also members of our union. So really touching all of the constituencies on our campus. We met monthly for the entire academic year of 2018, 2019, um, and we did a bunch of research. So we looked at first year college classes or first year experience seminars um, at both two and four year colleges to see both how they have structured their classes, what topics they're covering, and lessons learned about the kinds of things that were most impactful. Um, and then we also looked at the data to see, does this class impact student success in that semester and subsequent semesters? Because that is sort of a tricky thing to show. We wanna show that this is gonna be a valuable experience that, to put our energy in and ask our students to take this class. Um, and so we were looking at effectiveness data, um, both at two and four year colleges and then examples out there. Um, we also, once we developed ideas and I, 
and were looking for feedback, we took this to present to our academic senate, to the chairs and directors on our campus, and we had several open forums too, so that we could get feedback from our broader campus community about the ideas that we were bouncing around and what we were looking to, what we were thinking our plans were likely to be, so that we could make sure that we would have broad support on our campus. Next slide. And so the course that we developed um, was called College 101, Navigating Your Path Through College to Career, because we wanted to connect to the careers, which is really the whole point of preparing our students for a career in the world. Um, we finally settled on having a one unit course um, because our students are mostly part-time students and requiring them or asking, since we can't require anybody to do anything essentially, um, asking them to add three units to their first semester was a big ask. And so we settled on a one unit course, but created a two hour course. So they're getting a little bit more instruction for that one unit by having a one hour lab, one hour lecture course. Um, and the course outline brings together all of those things that we have envisioned in our goals that we're trying to help them feel like they have the skills and preparedness to be successful in college, that they are working towards their own personal meaningful goals, um, and that they feel like they belong, that they're part of a college community and that they belong on campus. Um, and then rolling in all of those kind of essential academic skills like writing and critical thinking and trying to help them integrate that in a way that they can learn in this class, but then also apply to all of their general education classes that they're taking as new college students. So that it, it doesn't just sit in the room with this one class, but then helps impact their success in other classes as well. Okay, next slide. Um, so in doing this, there were a few logistical issues that we had to deal with. Um, first, because our vision was to have CAP faculty teaching these courses to students in their CAP, we wanted the MQs, the minimum qualifications to teach this class to be extremely broad. We didn't want it to live in any of our existing departments because we wanted everybody to be able to teach this class so that we could have representative faculty from all the different CAPs um, interacting with students as part of their community building efforts. Um, and so we, we needed to create a new subject. Uh, so we created college studies. It's an interdisciplinary subject. Um, and that process of taking it through our local um, bodies for approval and then also taking it to our district because we are a nine campus district, we also needed district approval for this new subject. That was a really intense, long process for us. And so just to be aware that it can take some time to get that through all of the right channels. Um, and then moving forward, since we've only taught this for a year, some of these more logistical things have yet to be solved but they are things that will come up that um, Christian will probably be dealing with in the next year or so. Um, but as because this is its own subject, we will never have full-time faculty as part of this discipline or the subject, um, the, there, it gets tricky with the seniority priority list in terms of who gets to teach the class one. And we very much wanted both full-time and part-time faculty to be eligible and to want to teach this class because it's a lovely representation for our campus. Um, and so the seniority list will get tricky at some point, um, particularly if we are ever able to offer actual CAP dedicated sections. Um, being able to offer enough sections so that we could have time slots available to the students who wanted to take the class plus sign up for their CAP specific time slot, that it becomes a very tricky scheduling problem. And until you have enough sections offered, it becomes very hard to do. And so our initial pass at this class was um, open to CAP, that any student from any CAP and any faculty member from any CAP could be in these sections. Um, so some of our logistical issues, but mostly not a problem at the moment. Uh, done. Okay, so structurally and pedagogically, we wanted to embed equity into the course. Uh, we wanted to bring the teaching faculty for the new course all onto the same page and try to unify their background and ensure that the faculty have the same training for the course. We wanted to avoid students in different sections, you know, having very different experiences in terms of how the course was being taught, how it was being graded, et cetera. And we have an existing Title V professional development grant where we already teach equitable grading practices, scaffolding, culturally relevant teaching and learning pedagogy, mindset, grit, all, all the good stuff. And so we use this program, which is called the Teaching Innovations Academy or TIA as the vehicle for doing the work for College 101. The opportunity to design the course from the ground up was also one of our first forays into intentionally focusing on pillar four of guided pathways. Uh, next slide, please, Sean. 
The structure for our two-week intensive academy takes place over the summer. Um, participants are provided with a stipend for their work, and that's courtesy of the grant. And whereas with the typical summer TIA, folks redesign an existing course, we had this new overlay of faculty using the time and space to develop the content for this new College 101 course. We wanted the College 101 instructors to be exposed to all the different high impact practices that are, that are bullet pointed there on the slide, um, self-regulated learning, uh, culturally responsive teaching, so on. Um, so it would inform their work when they actually did develop the content. And as part of the process, we also wanted to use this time during the summer and into the fall to develop materials to help out instructors so they wouldn't have to build a class that is not in their area by scratch. And so as Becky had shared, um, it has broad main quals. And so there's folks from all different parts of the campus, but they didn't necessarily have expertise in, in the content. And so this was the opportunity to help build that together. Uh, next slide, please. So after the summer, we moved to the fall of 2019. Um, the team took everything that they learned during that two-week academy and transitioned to actually creating the content for the course. There was an important focus on guiding principles um, that we developed over the summer, and we'll drop that into the chat. Uh, the team worked independently during the fall, met each month as well to check in and provide updates. Um, we we're looking to create consistency across the different sections, so we utilized templates, identified and agreed upon the readings, unified the grading schema, and also included a capstone project on storytelling which was designed to create an opportunity for students to share their educational journey. And in doing so, we were spotlighting the cultural capital that the students already bring to the college. Next slide, please. From the summer to the fall, uh, that experience, you know, we had lots of cooks in the kitchen, so to speak, coming up with ingredients for this recipe. And as we moved into the spring, we realized that we would need a smaller team to work on consistency and really trying to create a unified uh, voice for the class. So this also involved ensuring compliance with accessibility, um, double checking that we were following the initial design principles that we had developed too. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, also spring 2020, the other key focus was moving the initiative forward by hiring an in individual to take this all over. Uh, we wanted it to be its own program and not part of any other department. And so we hired a coordinator who in the org chart, you know, reports to academic affairs. Um, the person was on a 12 month point two reassignment. Um, the duties were to lead the college in planning, developing the college 101 course, scheduling staffing classes, evaluating instructors, promoting the class, making sure that the campus was aware of it and that students were aware of it. Um, and then working with the one-on-one -on -one instructors to implement, evaluate, and really improve the course. Uh, the coordinator also participated in the hiring and the training of the instructors for the course. And so with that, um, I will turn it over to our College 101 coordinator, Dr. Novick. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you, Scott. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, my, I, I participated in the summer 2019 and the fall uh, session where we developed the course. And um, that's how I became interested in becoming the coordinator. And, but one of the first tasks that I um, had to approach was that of hiring instructors. And um, we, the application was open to anyone uh, who met the MQs to teach any subject. Um, and we folk, then we figured out interview questions, uh, including topics such as teaching philosophy, um, how each instructor defined student success, um, of course, why they wanted to teach the particular, this class. Uh, we also um, asked questions about their current equity practices. And we then try to ascertain their ability to work as a team and also to work with materials, as Scott was mentioning, that had already been developed. Since these instructors came from different disciplines, they may not have the expertise in, in, certain, uh, in some of the content that we were presenting in College 101. So we wanted to um, try in the interview questions to ascertain that. And out of that, we hired 11 instructors from a variety of disciplines, uh, anthropology, counseling, English, math, and media arts. Uh, so next slide, thank you, Sean. Um, so after the hiring process, um, again, as part of the, the TIA grant, uh, we had a two week summer program, which was designed to, to get these college 101, new college 101 faculty ready for teaching the class in the fall. So we, we covered topics listed here. The, we gave them the background of college 101, we discussed issues of equity and mindset and feedback, the importance of feedback. 
Um, we we um, explored teaching, different teaching strategies, uh, which was very interesting coming from um, faculty from different disciplines. Um, we discussed milestones and early alert, uh, self-regulated learning, um, also scaffolding related to the capstone project that we have scaffolded through College 101. And then we spent some time after those general, more generalized concepts, we spent some time actually preparing for teaching the class. So as a team, we reviewed each module um, in the, of the, and the course content in each module. We talked about the storytelling, the capstone project, and had all the instructors create their own version of this project so they would know, know the experience that the students would have going through this project. And then we continued with discussions and strategies for teaching each particular module. Next slide, please. So then in fall 2020, um, we needed to, well, immediately we needed to start promoting the class. Um, we did have a cohort of students who we were, we were gonna get into the class as best as possible through the LA Promise program, but we needed to promote the class because of course we want this to be available to any college student, any student at Valley College um, at any point in their college career. So we created, um, a website, uh, a YouTube channel, which we would use later to um, upload videos of the, um, the educational journey stories of our faculty, so students can visit the website and get to know the faculty that are teaching the class, these instructor profiles. And then we did specific outreach to certain groups on, on the LABC campus, to EOPS, to Next Up Guardian Scholars, um, to Black Scholars, to the LABC Welcome Center, LA Promise and TRIO. Next slide, please, thank you. So in fall 2020, um, we ended up offering six college sections of the course. And um, we also offered three dual enrollment sections. These are classes that are taught at, typically taught at high schools, but of course everything was done online. Um, so these are uh, partnerships that we have with local high schools and three um, local schools requested a, a section of College 101. Um, we, um, in order to keep feedback um, coming in at a regular at regular pace, we created a running journal, so to speak, that, that was uh, shared online where faculty, as they worked their way through each module, could list questions or suggestions for changes or topics for discussion. And I, you know, we, we, we kept trying to stress all the time that this was the first time we were offering this class and everybody was in the same boat and so and no one had taught the class before because there was a there was a bit of anxiety from some of the instructors about how do I deal with this where do I go so we wanted to make sure that everyone felt um, they had ownership in the class they could suggest changes and then we met on um, uh, also as part of the TIA program we met on a regular basis twice in the fall, last fall, fall 2020, and then once again in January of this year to go through module by module, question by question. Um, we went through the, the journal, we worked our way through it and talked about all these issues um, and potential changes that came up uh, for the class. Uh, next slide, please. So some of the challenges that we saw in fall 2020 um, related to the dual enrollment sections. One challenge was the age of students. Um, with our partnerships with high schools, although we can request or I would say suggest that a, a, a certain age student is more appropriate for a particular class, we don't always have that um, control over it. So sometimes a, a high school will make the uh, recommendation for the class or ask for the class and it ends up being um, ninth graders. And so that was a challenge for some of the instructors who taught the class. They had to kind of on the fly, make some changes to the structure of the class uh, to make it feel a little bit more appropriate for um, a younger student they weren't expecting. Um, because some of these students, even knowing where they are in their educational journey was a challenge or they may not have even understood sort of what that concept was. Certainly a, a challenge for us as for everybody was the move to a remote format. Um, this class was initially planned as an in-person class. 
an hour of lecture and an hour of lab for discussions and breakout sessions and so on, with the idea that eventually we might have an online version of the class. But of course, we were forced to put everything online on this chain. So we decided on a, a hybrid model where the hour, actually the hour of lab was synchronous on Zoom and the lecture, com the lecture component of the class was asynchronous online for students to do at their, at their own pace. And um, um, promotional videos over Zoom, we included that as part of it too. That was, that was a, a, some, one of the, another challenge. Uh, so next, next slide, please. Thank you. So as part of uh, the, the course, of course, we've been doing assessment of it um, all along. We had a pre and a post survey that we had students take at the beginning of the fall semester. Um, we had weekly surveys through Canvas where students could, in, in, could um, share other information, other feedback with instructors on specific modules, if there were particular questions that came up on, on certain modules. Um, a rating of the class through this pre and post survey. And we're, what we've planned, and actually it just got completed today, I'm about to send it out to my faculty colleagues, uh, we're, doing, we're doing a follow-up survey this semester um, of the students who took the class in fall, asking them questions about how College One helped them, was it worth, worth their time, would they suggest it to another student, and then some specific questions about the content in the class and whether students feel better prepared now and have used the material in College 101 in the next semester, in the spring semester. Um, next slide, thank you. So just looking specifically at a, at a little bit of the data, I wanted to point out a few things that were, we thought were um, particularly great about the data. One was this increase uh, of students um, actually, Sean, I think we, we skipped one slide, if we could go back. There we go. Um, I wanted to cover that chart there on the right. So uh, one thing we saw a big increase in from pre to post survey was this idea that students felt that they had created a relationship. There was a big uptick in students who felt they had created a relationship with at least one instructor on campus. Now, that might have been their College 101 instructor, but we're hoping that they were taking whatever skills they were learning and applying that to other classes that they might be taking might be taking. Um, there was also an increase in students understanding sort of what the hot topics were in the field that they might be interested in. And just understanding the idea of scaffolding assignments. Um, part of the capstone project, as we mentioned, is scaffolded in College 101, but it was also a goal to teach students how to scaffold their own assignments in other classes. So this was nice for us to see that, that a, a increase of a percentage of students felt that they now better understood how to do that for themselves. Next slide. Thank you. Um, then we, we saw an increase to, to in students who felt they now had a comprehensive education plan. They understood how to seek help on campus. Um, they had a better understanding of what their strengths and their weaknesses were. And they felt that they had better study skills as a result of taking College 101. And, and then sort of more general questions that, that just that, that did they develop skills in general that would help them be more successful? Um, we saw 93% uh, saying they strongly or somewhat agreed with that statement. Um, the idea that College 101 was worth their time, a 91 percentage of, of strongly or somewhat agree, and that they would recommend the College 101 class to other students, 89% responded positively. So next slide. So then um, for spring 2021 and beyond, um, just some ideas of improve, improvement and what we're in ongoing now with work groups with the faculty is we're revisiting the course outline and the materials. Um, we're considering even more dual enrollment versions. We actually have two sections or one section of dual enrollment being offered in the summer, coming up in summer 21 in a five week condensed format. Um, and we have a, a five week college for, uh, section of the class being offered in fall also. So that was another one of the initial goals is to have different formats of the class in terms of um, a full 15 week semester or a more condensed schedule. Um, you know, we're trying to build enrollment even, any, even more in a time that's challenging for everyone to build enrollment. 
Um, and then as uh, Becky was mentioning earlier, this idea of possibly having uh, themed sections of, of, of that relate to the meta majors or the caps or for specific affinity groups. There could be a section for veterans or a section for black scholars or a section for um, another affinity group on campus. So next slide. All right, so now we're at the lessons learned section. I'm gonna turn it back over to Becky for a minute to go through a couple bullet points there. Yeah, um, I think from the get go, we wanted to have broad um, participation in the development of this course and involving counselors was essential. Um, the counselors on our campus were were really helpful and open to this conversation and have um, have been a great support in this process. And our campus counselors were an important part in helping talk to counselors in our district too, um, to communicate what we were doing and how this was just another thing to help students, but not in, not in competition with the counseling subject or counseling departments across the district. So that was essential. Um, it takes time to do this whole thing. And the, the beautiful vision of doing CAP specific sections is still a beautiful goal. Um, and I hope we get there, but it was trickier than we anticipated it being. So um, those are my lessons. <laughs> Other lessons that uh, we really kind of walked away from the project with was um, pillar four and equity. Um, you know, as as pillar four ten, has tended to be sort of one of the last you know, components of kind of pathways that the colleges have been working on. Um, it really sort of underscored on the other side of this how intentional we have to be in, in designing equity into everything that we do. Um, a lot of times we have it as a design principle, or, or certainly we talk about it in our committees, but. Um, we understood that it, it had to move from beyond that to, to be you know, something that was concrete and, and demonstrable with, with what we were doing. Um, another big piece of it was that when you have lots of people working on some a project like this, so many different collaborate collaborators, uh, definitely carving out time for, for space, time and space for editing is critical. Um, there's a, a lot of sort of work on the back end of it to make sure that everything flows together and syncs back up again. Um, Another piece too is that we really wanted to make sure that again we were providing a, a consistent student experience and that was an exciting opportunity with this because you know for the most part we have so many courses that have been taught for so long by so many different instructors in, in, in the college of different departments but designing something from the ground up provided that opportunity to, to really think through you know what does it look like in terms of the grading schema across all these sections in terms of the readings in terms of how we're going to approach it um, and so really making sure that we were consistent was a, another big piece of it. Um, so some lessons learned from uh, my standpoint. First, I want to go back to just something that Becky said about involving the counselors. We, um, uh, that I meant, I meant to mention, the College 101 section that we have uh, scheduled for this fall or for this summer is in the first five week summer session. And I, in, in coordination with the counseling department, they are going to be offering a counseling session in the second summer session, meeting on the same days at the same time. So we're going to try and promote both classes together, again, to encourage students to think about continuing to take college success cl classes beyond maybe the initial one that they take to make it a regular part of what they do. So then jumping down, um, one uh, another lesson learned was we just needed to allow for instructor ownership of the materials. Um, again, given having all the materials pre presented for you for the class in one sense can feel sort of like a gift, but then we, we really wanted to encourage the instructors to feel like they owned it and they could suggest changes or make tweaks to it um, that, were, that they felt were appropriate, that worked a little bit better for them. Because as I mentioned earlier, there was a, a bit of instructor anxiety over that kind of issue. Like, you know, am I able to change something? Can I suggest a different reading? And we were very open to that and wanted to make sure instructors knew that all along. And we continue to do. Um, so, and even though we tried not to in the development process, we put too much content in the class. And that was definitely one of the major um, um, suggestions that kept coming back. One of the comments was that, wow, there's so much material. There are so many readings. There were so many videos. Can some of them be cut? So that's an ongoing discussion of which ones might be better as optional ones to use or additional resources for students. 
Um, and then the idea that training um, related to equity, for instance, tr the training, as we all know, is not enough. It really takes practice. And again, we've only offered this class now one full semester, uh, six sections. We do have one section being offered now in spring, but it's still very new. So it takes practice to work these out. And with that is the idea of needing to be flexible with the team, um, again, to make them feel like they have ownership in the class and they can contribute and feel that they're being heard when, when they ask for something to be changed. So. Um, well, thank you so much, LA Valley team, for presenting. Um, I don't see any questions that have popped up in the chat or anything. Um, if there is anything, feel free to throw it in there. Um, but otherwise, um, I so appreciate your time today and uh, this overview on, on your College 101 program. Um, and as always, we, we um, would suggest that if you have more questions, feel free to reach out to this wonderful team with those questions or reach out to your regional coordinator for guided pathways uh, throughout the state. And we'll be able to point you in some good resource directions as well. So with that, thank you so much, LA Valley College team. And um, this will be the end of our recording. Sean, I think if you go one more page, just for when the it gets sent out, we did put some examples of those capstone experiences. We knew we wouldn't have time to show them today, uh, but so when the if you're watching this later and the PowerPoint has been set out, you can see an example from a student and an instructor. And also wanted to thank you, Sean, for inviting us and for all the support you always give us. Of course, always. Well, thank you again, team, and uh, hopefully you all have a good rest of your day.